start with thoughts of goodwill. That's the beginning phrase for many meditation instructions. But it should apply to all your activities as you go through the day. You want to act on intentions of goodwill. Have that as your original motivating force. After all, that was the Buddha's basic motivation. After he gained awakening, he was totally free. He could do anything he wanted. And then he thought of all the beings suffering, as he said, they were burning with the fires of greed, aversion, and delusion. And he knew the way out. He could teach them the way out, so that's what he decided to do. You look at the Four Noble Truths. The whole idea of focusing a teaching on the problem of suffering has to be motivated by goodwill. You look at all of his teachings, there's goodwill underlying them. When you look at a particular teaching, you always ask yourself, if I have goodwill for myself, goodwill for other beings, how will I act on this teaching? Like right now, as you're meditating. You want to do it well because you know it's going to make the difference between suffering and not suffering. That's goodwill for yourself. You also know that the less greed, aversion, and delusion you have in your own mind, the less it'll spill out on other people. And that's our motivation here. The trick is to make it your motivation as continually as possible. That requires a lot of mindfulness. This is why the Buddha said, goodwill is a kind of determination and it's a kind of mindfulness. Determination in the sense that you have to make up your mind that you're going to act on goodwill. It doesn't come spontaneously. And in some cases it may come naturally, but in other cases it doesn't. So you have to remember, when you're dealing with people you like, goodwill. When you're people dealing with people you don't like, goodwill. And then you want to go beyond just having thoughts of goodwill to acting and speaking in ways that genuinely embody goodwill. This means you have to develop other qualities as well. We develop virtue. to make sure that our goodwill doesn't get swayed by ideas that are short-sighted, saying, well, this would be good for so-and-so if I lie to them a little bit and make them feel good. You realize in the long run that's not going to be good at all. They're going to catch at some point the fact that you lied, and then your words are going to have less value. Of all the precepts, the Buddha gave the most importance to the one on not lying. He says, if you feel no shame at doing this, there's no evil you won't do. You look at other people, if they lie easily, you say, oh, there's no evil this person won't do. You know you can't trust that person. So virtue has to go along with the goodwill as well, to make it genuinely good, to make it skillful. We're working not only on a good heart here, we're trying to develop a skillful heart. Or that not only wants good things to happen, but also goes, goes about acting and speaking and thinking in ways that will make them happen. And it requires endurance. You want to make sure that your goodwill is independent of conditions outside. That requires that you have an inner strength. And we do think about other people's goodness in order to encourage goodwill in ourselves. But it's not only when other people are good or we think that other people are basically good that we should have goodwill for them. Remember that this is our protection, that we act skillfully in all circumstances. The 
This means your goodwill has to be backed up by discernment. There are a lot of people who want to have, have dharma without karma. And so they say we have goodwill for all beings because all beings have Buddha nature, all beings are intrinsically good. But in a case like that, your goodwill is not really independent. When you run across people who are definitely evil in their intentions, what are you going to do then? Either you lie to yourself, thinking, well, they're basically good, or you tell yourself, well, this person doesn't deserve it. My goodwill. So we have to back up and remember the Buddha's reasons for teaching goodwill. It's because we need to have good intentions to guarantee that our actions will be good, our actions will be skillful. And if we really have goodwill, then we want to go beyond just being good in our intentions, but being skillful in our intentions. In all situations. So when we're dealing with people we like, we have goodwill. When we're dealing with people we don't like, we have goodwill. And we try to figure out what is the best way to express goodwill in any particular situation, particularly the difficult ones. Because that's where we need our protection most. So learn to look carefully at your intentions. Are they really good? Are they really skillful? You want to protect good intentions, skillful intentions, as the Buddha said, as a mother would protect her only child. Think of that image of the, the bandits sawing your limbs off with a two-handled saw. Even in a case like that, the Buddha said you should have goodwill for the bandits and for them from all beings. So your mind is not oppressed by the circumstances in the world around it that would seem to want to press it down, to confine it. This is one of the ways of freeing the mind from the limitations around us. So make your goodwill immeasurable, with no limits at all. And then get down to the nitty-gritty of figuring out how is the most skillful way to act, and to speak, and to think, with goodwill, in any situation. And be very careful to look at your motivation to make sure that it really is good. As John Cha once said, when you look at the mind, one of the first things you're going to see is its tendency to lie to itself. And when the mind can lie to itself, then it can do unskillful things. In the same way, as we talk about other people lying, we have a sense that there's no evil they won't do. If the mind can lie to itself about its intentions, then may it not intend evil, but it can end up doing a lot of bad things. So again, for your genuine protection, you want your goodwill to be genuine, and you want to have the strength to carry it through, the endurance, equanimity when equanimity is needed, determination, truth. All of these perfections are there to make sure that your goodwill is not just a floating idea. But that it actually informs everything you do and say and think. Since your heart is not just a good heart, and you're not just a good hearted person, you become a skillful hearted person. And that's when you're generally trustworthy. You can trust yourself. And other people can trust you, too.
in a world of a lot of doubts, a lot of uncertainty. A trustworthy person is generally a treasure. And so you can make yourself a treasure by being scrupulous in your goodwill. <laughs>